with Sean Marshall. I'm Zach Zigman. Delighted to have you with us. It took a little bit of extra time, <laughs> but it's go time now. Belly's yeah, back. No doubt. And worth the wait, absolutely. The NL Comeback Player of the Year led almost in every offensive category for the Chicago Cubs last year. The talk of the town was when's Belly coming back? Is he coming back? And he is back here at Sloan Park today for his spring debut. Cody Bellinger is the designated hitter batting third this afternoon. Coming up, we'll head downstairs. Elise Meneker scouts the Cubs' Man of Steel. The world's largest sports book in Las Vegas is now right at your fingertips here in Illinois. Hi, I'm... Chicago Cubs baseball on Marquee Sports Network is brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield. Through it all, by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer today. And by Menards. Save big money at Menards. It's Steele getting a start against the Angels today. And it was a few days ago that we mentioned what Steele thought of Shota Imanaga. He tweeted out about how he thinks this guy is filthy. He's going to go get his baseball card. So before today's game, I asked Shota what he thinks of Steele. And through his interpreter, Edwin, he told me that he has a lot of respect for Justin, that he has watched a lot of his pitching videos. And he can just see that he's a leader on this team who is really respected. Now, when it comes to Justin as the pitcher, he says, I can use him as an example. He really likes the way that he uses his stuff, in particular, he referenced that backdoor slider. He says, I could imagine as a right-handed hitter, that would be really difficult to hit. So he says it's something that he would like to incorporate or try to into his repertoire and just see if he can learn it. So these guys having conversations, and you can only imagine the value it has for these lefties. At least a lot to like about the Cubs' man of steel. The starting pitcher for the Cubs is brought to you by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. And Justin Steele making his second start of the spring. Yeah, second start and coming off a huge year last year 16 and 5 with a 3.06 ERA earned his first all-star game he was a stud on the mound he was a bulldog he was going right after the competition last year and he's looking to pick up where he left off last year the Angels lineup is brought to you by Ford it's a split squad for the Angels a Ray Adrianza is the leadoff man and he's at shortstop the center fielder Mickey Moniak that second Luis Renjifo, the third baseman, making his Cactus League debut. The cleanup man is the former Twins first baseman, Miguel Sano. The designated hitter, Aaron Hicks, bats fifth. In the number six spot, it's right fielder Joe Adele. The seventh hitter is former Cub left fielder Jake Marisnik. At catcher, the number eight hitter, Chad Wallach. And batting ninth, the Angels' second baseman, Kyron Paris. 
The defensive setup for the Cubs is brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield. In the outfield from left to right, it's Miles Mastroboni, Mike Talkman, and Seiya Suzuki. Christopher Morrell playing third today. Dansby Swanson, the Gold Glove shortstop. Nico Horner, the Gold Glove second baseman. Dominic Smith getting a look at first. Behind the plate, it's the veteran catcher, Jan Gomes. And Justin Steele is on the mound making his second start for the Cubs. After him, these are the guys available today. Javier Assad, Adbert Alzali, Hector Neris, Yancy Almonte, who came over in that trade with the Dodgers that brought Michael Bush to the Cubs, and Carl Edwards Jr. back with the Cubs after floating around Major League Baseball after starting his career with the Cubs. And we are underway. Line drive on one hop fielded by Swanson to throw the first in time. One pitch, one away, and that is efficiency. And Justin Steele presses the that was easy button in the first <laughs> pitch. Swing, broken bat, ground ball to shortstop. That's the way you like to start off an outing. Soft contact is always the way to go. So one down, Cubs and Angels. It'll bring up the center fielder, Mickey Moniak. Steel dealings, strike one. Moniak was the top overall pick in the 2016 draft by Philadelphia. Didn't work out for him with the Phillies. A swing and a miss, but he was traded to the Angels in 2022, a deal that sent Noah Syndergaard to the Phillies. And last year, Moniak finally took off, hit 280, 14 home runs, 45 RBIs in 85 games with the Angels. Swing and a miss. Yeah, I love the three. sequence. I love that sequence by Justin Steele right there. Starts off with a fastball down and away, perfectly executed. Sinker in and off with the pitch, which is a pitch that he hasn't thrown very much over the past couple of seasons. It puts him away with the wipe away slider down away. One, two, three, punches his ticket. I thought it was interesting listening to Steele talk after his first start last Friday. As Luis Redhifo swings and misses, he said, I, I threw some good sinkers, some good change-ups, mixed in the curveball a few times. I was really happy with my secondary pitches, and, and I'm sure he was, but with him, it's always about the fastball and the slider. Yeah, no doubt. And what separates Justin from other starters around the league is he's really a two-pitch pitcher. He's four-seamer and slider, but what I've heard so far in conversations out of Cubs camp is mixing in a couple more sinkers, and starting to do a little bit of backdoor action, which is to right-handed batter starts as a ball off the plate and ends on that outside corner. So if he can get that backdoor slider and complement with the way he pounds the ball inside to these right-handed hitters, it just opens up a, a whole other chapter for him to continue to get guys out. Red Hefo takes a ball in the dirt, one and two the count. He's making his spring debut. He's been out with a hamstring injury. The pitch. Two and two. Red hit 264 last year for the Angels. 16 home runs, 51 RBIs. 27 years old, native of Venezuela. Swing and a miss. Strike three. The Angels go down in order in the top of the first.
Back at Sloan Park, let's take a look at the Cubs lineup brought to you by Benny's Beverage Depot. If you can't find it at Benny's, it's probably not worth drinking. Nico Horner is the leadoff man. Seiya Suzuki bats second, and then it's the spring debut of Cody Bellinger in the number three hole. He's the designated hitter this afternoon. Christopher Morell is the cleanup man. Dansby Swanson bats fifth in the number six hole. It's Mike Talkman. Jan Gomes hitting seventh. Dominic Smith eighth. And the number nine hitter is Miles Mastroboni. As Nico Horner takes a ball low, 1-0. and oh, The starting pitcher for the Angels is brought to you by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. If you like left-handed pitching, this is the matchup that you'll enjoy watching. Reed Detmers got a good fastball, averaging mid, mid 90s, 94.3. See, mixes in the slider, slash sweeper, 32% of the time. But he's a rotation fixture in that Angels rotation for the past few years. He was seven and six with a 3.77 ER last year, over 25 starts. Horner waits for the 1-1. One -one. Here it comes. Up the middle and snagged on a high hop by the second baseman Paris low throw to first in time to get Horner the defensive setup for the Angels is brought to you by Northwestern Medicine the Angels in the outfield from left to right the former Cub Jake Marisnik Mickey Moniak and Joe Adele in right Luis Renanjifo plays third a Ray Adrianza at short Kyron Paris at second Miguel Sano playing first behind the plate Chad Wallach and on the mound, Reed Detmers. Seiya Suzuki in the box. The pitch. Hit in the air, deep left field, going back Marisnik, and he makes the catch against the wall. What a catch by Marisnik in left. Well, we've seen what Jake Marisnik can do on defense. He was a cup for a short time there, but yes, I mean, outstanding play. At the plate. Designated hitter number 24, Cody Bellinger. A nice ovation for Belly as he looks at a strike. Bellinger coming off a monster year. 307 last year, 26 home runs, 97 RBIs. Fouls it back in the hole 0 and 2 and fittingly he's at the plate with two strikes because that's not a problem where he was phenomenal. Uh, he's phenomenal with two strikes also phenomenal versus left handed pitching last year. I mean posted up some of the best numbers versus lefty a 337 batting average lefty lefty. I mean that's incredible and you're doing a lot of things right with your swing to do that. Smoked on the right side, fielded on the outfield, grasped by Parrish, and Bellinger rounds out in his first at bat of the spring. We head to the second, scoreless. Why app?
In base, uh, top of the second, the Angels and the Cubs are scoreless. Justin Steele on the mound. Miguel Sano takes a strike on the outside corner. Seiya Suzuki flexing the muscles in the last of the first. Robbed of a home run. Yeah, I think he did get robbed right there. It's a good swing, hanging curveball. Round ball hit to third. Morell fields it, slings across in time, one away. Yeah, I like that. At Chris Morell at the hot corner, ranging to his left. There's been some question marks about who's going to play third base, but Morell's been over there getting the reps, working on his craft. We always see him getting in the extra work, the backfield work, and plays like this. You have to practice him to execute him like that, and that was done uh, very well. So one down. Here's Aaron Hicks, the designated hitter. He looks at a ball low and inside. How about this? As a pitcher, how long does it take for you to have confidence and trust in a guy learning a new position behind you? Tap foul. I, I think you just pitch to put the ball on the ground and let your defense play. You trust that your teammates are putting in the work, honing their craft to be good behind you. I know they wouldn't prefer not to be good. Of course, they want to make every single play that they possibly can. But Chris Burrell, he's this one off the glove of Morell and Hicks safe at first. Let's go downstairs to Elise. And we guys talk about Morell at third. Council did as well before this game. Just saying that when you want to assess Morell and how he's doing at third base, he said it's too hard to do on an everyday basis. Like, this is not something that they're just going to look over at the course of spring training. It's going to be ongoing. And what we've seen so far in this inning is what Council loves. We talked about it last night, too, in the game. Just when Morell is in, he wants the ball to go to him. He wants to see as many different things, reps, as he can. And it hits on that point. Is he it again? No, almost. But he wants him to make mistakes and learn. And so this is really a great opportunity for Morell. And at the very basic level, as Council has said, you know, it's Morell's job. You just have to field the ground ball, you know, pick it up and throw. That's what they need him to do at the very basic level, just to really simplify things for him. But we really think, as he has said, that the consistency will be good for him. Thanks, Elise. And there could be some growing pains. That's part of the process. Morell charged with an error on that last play. Hicks at first. Joe Adele at the plate. Looks at a ball outside. The count one and one. Yeah, but going back to talk about Morell defensively, he's, he puts in the work. I mean, that's a hard hit ball, probably knuckling, a very tough play. That ball gets on you in a hurry over there at third base. So, yeah, there's room for error, and there's also a lot of room to learn. Ground ball hit to short. Swanson's got it to Horner for one on the first in time. Double play. Christopher Morell, sigh of relief.
Cubs fans, sign up now for the Marquee Sports Network app and receive free spring training baseball by using the promo code SPRINGTRAINING24 at watchmarquee.com. Sign up now for free Cubs baseball and a chance to take Sean Marshall anywhere you go on that app. Last of the second, scoreless game, Cubs and Angels. Here's Christopher Morrell, and he smokes one to the left field for a base hit. Aggressive. I like it. First pitch swinging. Detmer's trying to get ahead with the first pitch fastball. Chris Morrell probably a little frustrated from the error last inning. Comes up with a good swing of the bat, stays back. I like how still the head is throughout that swing and barrels it up. One of the league leaders in exit velocity and barrel percentage last year. You just want to get that bat in the lineup as much as possible, as often as possible. 26 home runs last year, 70 RBIs, and 821 OPS. He's at first. Stansby Swanson at the plate takes a breaking ball for a strike. Morrell played in 107 games with the Cubs last year. And he was even hotter in the 29 games he played in Iowa before getting the call up. Hit 330 with 11 home runs, 31 RBIs, and then that continued when he got the call. Yeah, he had a big year, and he's just so exciting to watch on a daily basis, what he can do with the bat. I mean, the loud noises it makes off of his barrel. Morell goes, throw to second, not in time, stolen base. And we talk about a little bit of must-watch TV. Chris Morell gets a good jump, moving on the first move from Detmers. Legs it out, good hook slide around the tag. First on the base. So now a man in scoring position for Dansby Swanson. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Fouled away. Cups now 10 for 10 in stolen base attempts this spring. aggressive with Craig Council as the manager. Here's the one two. Ground ball base hit in the left field. Morell stops at third. And now the Cubs in business. Men at the corners with no one out. And Mike Talkman do up. It's so good. Dansby staying back on this breaking ball kind of rolls middle middle in a little bit but just Completely still with the head. I always talk about head position. The best hitters have still eyes or head. They swing around a still head. And Dansby squares it up, setting the Cubs up for a big inning, first and third, nobody out. Talkman this spring hitting at 154. Detmers delivers. A comebacker and the throw to third, not in time. No, in time. It looked like there was a delayed call there. Morell was initially going to be called safe, but now he's out. What a way. I don't think so. What's the call here? I wonder if. Take a look here. The third baseman, Renjifo, blocked Morell from being able to slide into the bag. And yet, there's the indication. Oh, there it is. So mark that one down, E5, error on Renjifo. And the Cubs get a run. They strike first, one to nothing. Hey, it's the spring. It's just a little chaos. Out. Yeah. You know, Morell. Come back or back to the pitcher. Weak hit, broken bat. Takes a nice secondary shuffle. Detmers has to pay attention to him at third. Makes a bang bang. I think he was going to be under the tag anyway. Safe, setting up a probably an even bigger inning here, but a good base running and worked out in the Cubs' advantage there to score a run. So no one out, and the Cubs still threatening. One run in. Met at first and second. Jan Gomes at the plate. Now the 0-2. Up high. 
Gomes this spring hitting at 333. Coming off a renaissance a year ago, there were a lot of questions at this point last season as to whether or not the Cubs had enough offense at the catcher position. Swing and a miss, strike three. One away, but Gomes did a really nice job for the Cubs in 116 games last year. Hit 267, 10 home runs, 63 RBI. I mean, that's more than you can ask for. He was outstanding. The veteran presence, the leadership, commanding the pitching staff all year, doing a great job. Game calling, pitch blocking, doing it, doing it all. I mean, he's in the big leagues for 13 big league seasons and just a seasoned vet, always a pro approach. Dominic Smith at the plate he takes a strike. Smith, one of the newcomers this spring, signing a minor league deal. Oh! oh. Hits him up high. appears to be okay and the Cubs have the bases loaded let's send it downstairs Elise what do you have everything that Sean Marshall was saying about Gomes is pretty much exactly what council had to say about his veteran catcher he said just quickly when you're around Gomes you can just see his experience it slows the game down so much for pitchers and Sean you can probably talk about how valuable it is to have a catcher who can really just slow the game down for you and, and not make the moment too big he said Gomes is really good at that just that savvy veteran and he keeps figuring out ways to use his skill and talent yeah at least you're exactly right I mean the veteran presence I mean he's like having almost like a manager in the dugout and on the field all the time. He's got such a great knowledge of the game. He's been there. He's done that. He's played big moments. He's seen a lot of baseball in those 13 big league seasons and just a wonderful guy to have in that clubhouse, in the locker room as a leader. Yeah, Cubs president Jed Hoyer echoing the sentiments you just made, Sean. He's, he's called Gomes a player coach if you will because uh, of the leadership that he brings meeting on the mound for the Angels Cubs threatening they've got the bases loaded with just one away and the number nine hitter Miles Mastroboni at the plate he's had a good spring hitting better than 300 now the pitch on the outside corner for a strike Detmers, the pitcher, 24 years old, 6'2", 210 pounds, and he threw a no-hitter his rookie season. He certainly has the stuff. The pitch. Tap foul. Struggled last year, though. 28 starts, 4 and 10, 4.48 ERA. A nice matchup here for Master Boney. Left on left, he's in the hole. 0-2. It's important for him to, to put the ball in play right here, shorten up, and try to get that run in from third here. Check swing, did he go? Yeah, he did. Strike three, two Good away. Sweep. That's that slider slash sweeper we talked about setting up Detmers, but you know, starts middle. I mean, he's got great velocity, 94, 95, and that pitch as it's traveling to plate. Master Boney sees probably fastball middle the ball just takes off makes a right turn. Uh, it's a good pitch. So here's Nico Horner. Takes a breaking ball up high one and oh the count. Cubs scoring their run on an error by the third baseman Renjifo earlier in this frame. They've got the bases loaded. On the outside corner for a strike. Corner grounded out to second to lead off the game for the Cubs. Some bad luck. The ball hit the mound and ricocheted to the second baseman, Paris. The pitch. Fouled away. Nico spent the offseason. Trying to get a little bit more athletic at the plate to generate more power. 
Nothing wrong with what he did last season. 283 batting average, nine home runs, 68 RBIs, 40 plus stolen bases. Fouled away. But they believe there's a little bit more power in there. So part of the offseason work, adjustments in the lower half, a lot of bat speed training, opening up the body to generate some more thump. Distant foul, one and two. It's good battle. I mean, Detmers has thrown some really nice pitches this at bat. Will challenge fastball, and that's on the plate. Probably a strike. Nico, like he's done all the seasons he's played the big leagues, battles, shortens up with two strikes, uses the whole field, and it really the power numbers are going to come because he does have a nice contact approach. He continues to build that lower half, like we talked about with his offseason training this year. The sneaky pop's going to come. He'll get, he'll clip a few more, but the consistency that he's shown, especially last year playing in 150 games. It's been excellent. A swing and a miss there. Cubs leave the bases loaded, but they're up one to nothing as we head to the third. Time now for our Prevagen memorable moment. We take you back to this offseason in October when Advert Steele, Horner, Keegan Thompson, former Cub Jonathan Holder, and strength and get conditioning coach Keegan Knoll. Yeah, they all went fishing together. So you can see they had some luck there. Uh, talked to Thompson about it. He said they caught four to five blackfin tuna, and the big ones that you saw, they were they caught three yellowfin. They were like 130 pounds each, Thompson said. When I caught up with Steele, he said that it's something he's always done with his friends, so he wanted to get a group of guys together to take them out for the experience. They cooked a few. They ate a few raw as Steele gives up a home run there to Marisnik. But he says he still has a lot in his freezer. So it, it really sounded like a cool experience, guys. Yeah, it sounds like a really fun trip, uh, Elise. Jake Marisnik, the ex-Cub, tying the game at one. So he's taken a home run away and then flexed his own muscles to put the Angels on the board. That's a lot like what Master Boney did. I think last Sunday he robbed a home run and then he hit a home run of his own. I think the next inning, but I think that was a change up down kind of sped him up. Bouncing ball hit to third another chance for Morrell the throw high. And rumbling on the second base is Chad Wallach the catcher. Yeah, the thing that I see on this play in particular was he started thinking about it. he caught it thinking about the throw that's what I think and when you start to be a little tentative hold the ball a little too long you kind of gather your thoughts a little bit in a negative way thinking about an outcome like that if he comes up fields it and just stays low and shuffles through it aggressively I think he throws a dot to first base but instead had a little time to think about it and cause that bad throw. 
Mm. A bunt. Right back to the pitcher, Steele, and his throw is wide of first. Coming in to score is Wallach, and the Angels take the lead. Some fielding mistakes putting Los Angeles ahead. And the pitchers work on PFPs a lot in spring training, probably two, three times a week. It's a really well executed bunt. Paris with good speed. Uh, and just fundamentally talking about the way Steele got to this ball. He got to it in a hurry, but, but kind of opened that front stride foot open, leaking that arm out of way. Again, if he gets to it quick, stays a little more compact, I think he makes a little bit of a better throw. The batter, A. Ray Adrianza, he looks at a strike 0 and 1. So give Kyron Paris, the second baseman, a single. And then the run scores on E1. Two to one Angels with no one out here in the top of the third. Harris with good speed at first base. Adrianza rounded out to short in his first at bat, a swing and a miss. And the runner Paris steals well, second. Good eight. speed, very good speed. We'll put a good one together. Well, early in spring training, Zach, you know, you kind of get the mistakes out of the way early. You know, that's what they set up spring training for to work on things, work on your PFPs, work on your fielding, work on your pop up communication. Tap foul. So why you don't go straight into regular season play? You gotta, you gotta practice. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like you know from experience. Yeah. <laughs> Get the kinks out, right? Yep. We've all done it. We've all had mistakes in spring training, regular season, but it's kind of what you do after those plays. You, you learn from them and, you know, try not to do it again, I guess you could say. And to the count to the batter, Adrianza. Steele delivers. Fouled away. Adrianza is now 34 years old. He's been around for a while. San Francisco, Minnesota, Washington, Atlanta. He's won a couple of World Series championships. Just five games with the Braves last year because of elbow and shoulder injuries. Signed a minor league deal with the Angels. The pitch. Tap foul. Adrianza wears number 13. The reason he's Ozzy Guillen's grandson. How about that? And always known for defense. I mean, he could always pick it. Fly ball down the right field line, and this one slices foul out of play. Putting together a nice at bat. You know, the players like Adrianza, kind of the, the slappy hitters, the contact guys, the guys that foul off a lot of pitches. They weren't my favorite guys to face, Zach. You know, eat up pitches. You know, he's putting up a nice battle versus Justin Steele. Blow it inside, count even at two and two. Steele threw 46 pitches. In his first outing last Friday against the White Sox. Went three innings, giving up two runs. And this one again, tap foul. Two hits, one walk, two strikeouts. Coming off an all-star season. Steele had 30 starts last year, 16 and 5, a 3.06 ERA. He threw 173 and a third innings. And I bring that up because he says his goal this year is at least 180. Fouled away. If you're throwing 175 innings, you're doing a great job. You're in the game, you're making all your starts, you're healthy, you're eating innings. And we saw that from Justice Steele. He was out there almost every start. You know, just the durability was a question coming in a couple of years ago, but he's shown that he's got great stamina to last late into the seasons. 
Arm strength is good, but hopefully he can throw more than that this year. That one gets past Gomes. Throw to third, not in time as Paris takes the base. Yeah, this pitch, he just kind of kind of yanks it. Gets around the top of the ball, front of the plate. Nice job by Gomes getting some body on it, but the ball kicked. The breaking ball, the ball's going to kick to the left a little bit. Hits, hits him on his forearm, keeps it around the plate, makes the throw, but just a little bit too late. Steel. Ends up walking Adrianza. And the Angels continue to threaten. Up two to one here with no one out in the top half of the third inning. Cups fans single game tickets are on sale. Don't miss a second of the action. The matchups and the magic. You have to see it. Visit Cubs.com slash tickets. So Tommy Hadovy. The meeting on the mound as the Cubs try to work out of this gym. Good mound visit. I mean, he cruised, Justin cruised through that first inning. You know, pitch count's kind of getting up uh, here and just kind of slowing him down, just giving him a little bit of a breather, regroup, talk about the pitching plan to the next hitter. As you see, 16 pitches here in the third inning so far, nobody out. Come on. So the batter now is Nicky Moniak, the Angel center fielder. What a bad fouls one away. Jake Marisnik started this frame with a home run to tie up the game at one. A couple of errors put the Angels ahead, and a walk to Adrianza putting men at the corners. Pop fly yes, left field. Do it. Underneath it, Mastroboni. Paris tags. Here comes the throw, and it's cut off. The Angels score again, now 3-1 to one over the Cubs, thanks to the sacrifice fly by Mickey Moniak and advancing the second base, Adrianza. Yeah, good at bat to lift the ball into the outfield. There's nobody out first and third. Your job as a hitter to just get the guy in no matter what you do. Ground ball, sack fly. Does a good job pushing the ball deep in the left field. A uh, little challenge throw going into home right there advances uh, the Angels runner in a second as well. So one down the Angels have pushed three across here in this third inning. And the batter is Luis Renjifo. He looks at a strike. Renjifo struck out swinging in the first. 0 for 1. The 1 1 delivery. Fouled away by Renjifo. Good challenge, Heater, right there. The previous pitch just kind of flew open a little bit. That I call them arm side misses when kind of jump towards the plate and the arm is trying to play catch up and you miss up and away to a righty batter. But a nice adjustment pitch to pitch by Justin Steele to keep that front shoulder in, stay on that backside just a tick longer to get to that extension point out, out front and execute that fastball in, which where he's very good. Uh, and execute that fastball up and in those righties. Fouled away by Ren Hifo. Man, the Angels are making steel work in this inning. They really are good at bats. Uh, base running has been exceptional so far for the Angels in this inning, but really getting this pitch count up. And, and it's not, you know, it's like death by a thousand needles, fouling off balls, laying off chase pitches. Again, that ball's just down, making him throw another good pitch over and over. But, you know, is my least favorite type of hitter to face Zach. The guys that foul off pitches and battle and just grind and get your pitch count up because the, then you start getting your mistakes. The 2 2 in the dirt, full count. You can tell Steele's fighting himself.
Ground ball hit to short. Swanson's got it. Two away, advancing to third, Adrianza. So that'll bring up Miguel Sano, the cleanup man for the Angels. A leaner, Miguel Sano. He looks good. Much more fit, if you remember him from his days in Minnesota. Spent eight years with the Twins. He was an all-star in 2017. He's listed at 272 pounds, but he says he's lost nearly 60 pounds. As he looks at a strike on the outside corner, one and one. Is that a long, yeah. successful major league career? Over 2,500 big league plate appearances, 162 home runs. He's, he's got that easy pop. And nearly 700 games in his good career. Spot. That's a good spot there. Sano, a lifetime OPS, better than 800. Fouled away. But has not played in the majors since 2022. Suffered a knee injury. Didn't see any action with anyone last season. Signed a minor league deal with the Angels. Gave his best effort to get in shape. And giving it a run here. Crack foul. Two and two. Yeah, Justin's working hard this inning. You know. The mistakes so far with the pitch count getting up are to that arm side just kind of kind of leaking a little bit when the fatigue starts to kick in a little bit usually lefties are missing out over the plate the breaking ball doesn't have quite the bite fastball it's got run out and over just like that pitch right there but he's still got enough velocity uh, to carry the ball you know obviously the angels are putting up some very quality at bats making justin work extremely hard yeah, they've made the Cubs pay for those defensive miscues in this inning. Steele already passed the pitch count of his first start last week. Through 46 in that outing. Full count. Steals ready. Here comes the payoff pitch to Sano. Fouled away. I don't know if he's looking up. Uh, Justin's looking up frustrated. Just all the foul balls. I don't know how many foul balls there has been this inning, but probably a dozen, maybe 15. Uh, doing a nice job of just making Justin work. Uh, it's not really going how he planned, but it's early in spring training. The most important part at this point of spring training is build that pitch count, and he's doing that today. Pitch number 51. And a ground ball hit to short. Backhanded by Swanson. The toss across in time. And the top of the third comes to an end. Angels up 3-1. to one.
Hey, Cubs fans, go to marqueesportsnetwork.com for all the latest Cubs news and in depth feature stories. Presented by Jeff Vukovic, your local nationwide insurance agent. Visit jeffvuk.com. Nationwide is on your side. Well done, Marsh. Say a Suzuki. It's my first card read of the spring. You couldn't tell. Regular yeah. season form already. Prodi. Thank you. Say it waits for the 1 0. -oh. Here it comes. And that's in there for strike. Suzuki robbed of likely could have been a home run his first time up as he pops it foul out of play. Definitely robbed. Jake Marisnik and nice route. This ball it's probably a little bit of top spin why it didn't get up onto that berm. For Marisnik, a nice play. Always known for great defense. Goes up at snags and brings that one back. But Suzuki, what he did in the back half of that season last year is exactly what the Cubs signed him to do. He was posting up numbers. He was one of the best hitters in all of Major League Baseball in that second half. Or hopefully he can carry that over into this season. That confidence, that approach. He was excellent. Hit 321 in August. Follow that up with a 370 batting average in September. Strike three calls. Suzuki doesn't like it. One away. Downstairs, here's Elise. And exactly what you're describing, guys, is what Say had talked about earlier in camp. Just how he wants to try to continue that feeling where he left off last season into this season. So at the plate, he'd like to, you know, stay aggressive. That was key for him. And in part of doing that understanding, though, the, the game situation as well, right? There's always that balance at the plate where you want to be aggressive, but you also want to understand what you may need to do at the plate in a particular situation. So it's definitely something he's thought about in the offseason. Cody Bellinger at the plate. Elise fouls another one out. 0 oh, and 2 the count. Belly grounded out to second in his first Cactus League at bat in the first. Got a nice ovation from the crowd before he stepped to the plate. Up high. Zach, was your phone blowing up at 4 a.m., 5 a.m. when the news of <laughs> Cody Bellinger broke? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Belly's phone was also blowing up, but <laughs> he elected not to answer. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Two away. Dansby Swanson was FaceTiming him, wanted to let him know, hey. I... No, didn't want to answer. <laughs> or Bellinger was blowing up Swanson's phone, and, and uh, Swanson said, I, no, I'm, I'm not answering it. I'm, I'm going to sleep. And he found out his, in the morning. His spokesman at the <laughs> Cubs convention. When are we going to get Valley back? And he's back. But Detmers has found a nice little rhythm here. He's mixing all his pitches. The slow curve. The sweeper. He's got great finish on his fastball. He's got the Cubs hitters. The best Cubs hitters kind of in between right now. He's got good rhythm. Yeah, he pitched well against the Cubs during the regular season last year. The Cubs were out in Anaheim. A swing and a miss by Morrell. You know, 1 0, you think you're getting four seamer or a fastball strike, pulls the string on it with a change up, straight change up. Good execution. Well, singled his first time up in the second. Now the 1 1. 1 and 2. Good. Same pitch, same spot. Detmers deals inside. Detmers was born in downstate McComas, moved to Chatham, and graduated from Glenwood High School down there. And call strike three, and Detmers strikes out the side in the third. Three-one Angels.
Football on Marquee Sports Network is brought to you by Budweiser. This Bud's for you by Advocate Healthcare. Let's live well and make the most of every moment, game day and every day. And by the Bob LaCorsio Auto Group, you're going to like buying a car this way. New man on the mound for the Cubs, and this pitching change is brought to you by Lakeside Bank. Lakeside Bank, it's about time. 34-year-old right-hander Hector Neris takes over for the starter, Justin Steele. Neris signed this offseason after spending time with the Astros, including a championship season in 2022, helping fortify the Cubs' new-look bullpen. Yeah, no doubt. He's going to be a huge piece uh, late in the game for Craig Council. He's dependable. He's durable. He's pitched in 70 or more games over the past three seasons. He knows what winning looks like. He's been on that World Series championship Astros team. He's been a guy that the Cubs bullpen pitchers have been looking up to so far and for good reason. He's setting a great example with, with his work ethic passing on knowledge that he knows about what he's learned over the his successful major league seasons as you see one of two pitchers to appear in 70 plus games in each of the last three seasons with Emmanuel class a but yeah he's a dog out there and he's going to be a big part either setting up games closing games and we'll see how Craig Council uses him between him and Al's live you know we'll close out those games late and he's been a model of durability one down here in the fourth. The batter is Joe Adele. He looks at a ball outside. One and oh the count. Dating back to 2019, Neris leading all major league relievers in outings and third in strikeouts. Swing and a miss. And he's been sharing knowledge with the bullpen guys on how to get out there. Even when you're sore, what it takes, what, what kind of preparation he does. He works out early in the morning, so he has time to recover late in the day. But, yeah, he's setting a great example for what the bullpen should look like and what they need to do to have good seasons. Adele drills one deep down the left field line, and this one is gone. The Angels extend the lead now up 4-1 to one over the Cubs on the solo shot to left by Joe Adele. Yeah, and sometimes when you throw that off-speed pitch, I think this is a split or a change-up, kind of fades back down and in. It speeds up the hitter. So you could pull the ball for power. He clips this ball. Adele clips this ball out front. His bat head gets out front because it's a little bit of an off-speed pitch, and you're just able to pull it and keep it right inside that left field foul pole. Here's Marisnik. Jake Homer, his last time up, swings and misses at the first offering from Neris. Now the 0-1. Shows bunt, bunts it down the third baseline, and he's going to have a base hit. He homers, lays down a bunt for a hit. And that's a lost art, really, that, you know, got third baseman playing back. You know, just laying down a, a, a good bunt. It's not, it's not great. It's not, not hugging the line. Doesn't go foul. But if he just puts the ball on the ground past the pitcher, you see where Morell's playing. He's playing deep, not expecting the bunt because he just went deep his last at bat. Uh, it's that's good baseball right there. I like that precision placement by Marisnik. Chad Wallach at the plate looks at a ball up high. One and zero oh the count. Marisnik agreed to a minor league deal with the Angels in December. He's been around a lot of different teams. Made his debut in 2013 with Miami. And he goes. Throw to second. And stealing the base, Marisnik. It's a good jump. And no, it's probably on Neris. You know, pitchers want to deliver the ball about 1.3, 1.4 seconds that, to give the catcher a nice chance to throw a guy out. He's probably a little bit over that, maybe 1.6, 1.7. Kind of just working on the batter, kind of forgetting about the runner. Jake Marizic with nice speed gets a great jump easily in the second base. Bounced foul. Marizic saw choking around with his former teammate Nico Horner. Among his many travels, Marizic spent 65 games with the Cubs in 2021, hitting 227 with five home runs and 22 RBIs. 
played with the Astros, Mets, Padres, Pirates, White Sox, Tigers, Dodgers. Mentioned the Marlins earlier and the Cubs. The one two. Pop foul out of play by Wallach. Justin Steele started. Went three innings, giving up three runs. Two of them were earned. Strike three called. Two away. That's a nice spot right there. It's got some comeback action. Got some arm side runs. Starts probably off the plate, down and away. Ball tracks back to that outer edge. John Gomes sticks it. You score that at backwards K if you're keeping the score at home. Right, the K backwards, freeze them. Right, that's down a nice pitch right speak. there. There you go. A little something every day. There you go, Sean. Kyron Paris looks at a strike. Maris to nice. Paris, swing and a miss. Ball just kind of hangs in the strike zone, you know. Curveball just kind of floats, got tight spin, very late break half to the plate, halfway to the plate. Paris throw it again. For Naris. <laughs> That's a high for a ball, one and two. You're a poet, and you know it. <laughs> Little theme here. Paris just 22 years old. Second round pick in 2019. Nice. Oh, my. Yeah, you want that call when you're out there pitching. I mean, this is the same, same spot, I think, as the previous strike three, but hopefully he can repeat it. I think he's got, he can go either way, back to that fastball down away, or he can spin a little breaking ball here down and away. Little tapper right back to Neris has to hurry. PFPs in time. And occasionally they do work. Out yeah. number three. For your next. Saturday, April 20th, the Cubs battle the Marlins at 1.20 in the afternoon. The first 10,000 early arriving fans will receive a Wrigley Field IV fleece blanket. Visit Cubs.com slash tickets. New pitcher going now for the Angels. Left-hander Kenny Rosenberg takes over. Kenny got a little four-pitch. 
mix, four seam, change up, cutter, curveball, pick, pitches out of the Angels bullpen last year. Dansby Swanson at the plate. And he looks to strike one and one the count. Rosenberg, 28 years old. Eighth round pick at Tampa Bay back in 2016. Bounces one to third. There's a new third baseman in the game for the Angels. And Hunter Dozier makes the play. One away. Hunter Dozier probably World Series winner on that Kansas City Royals team. 2015, is that right? He's been around for a while. 10 or 11 seasons. And a veteran taking over for Luis Renjifo at third today. Mike Talkman at the plate. And looks at a breaking ball for a strike. Love what Talkman did last year. You know, always a professional at bat. It's a good swing. There you go. And it gets past the left fielder, Marisnik. And Talkman safe at first. Just a, a no panic approach. We saw it all the time last year. Just comes in the batter's box with a plan. Serves this fastball out over the plate, taking the ball where it's pitched, down and away, going with it, hit the ball hard. But you're going to get that consistently from Mike Talkman, the Palatine Poundo, we call him. Just consistency at the plate, a great approach. Uh, he'll battle in there, he'll stay in there, lefty lefty, like we saw right here. But it, Craig Council early on spring training said that Talkman, you you made the team, so I'm guessing that's a little pressure off his shoulders about how this spring training should go for him. So he should be happy that he made the team, but continue to put the work in and continue to have swings just like that one. Talkman credited with a hit. He's at first with one away. Jan Gomes waits for the 0 1. That's up high. Last year, Mike Talkman got a whole bunch of nicknames from everybody outside of Wrigley Field as Gomes fouls that away. And at one point during the season, down in the clubhouse, I asked him, you know, you've been called the Palatine Pounder, the pride of Palatine. Everyone's saying it's the summer of Talkman. What are your friends called? And he just looks at me and goes, Mike. <laughs> Keep it simple. Bouncing ball off the pitcher, and everybody's safe. Doesn't feel good to get hit right in the back of the leg, the comebacker. Wasn't hit extremely hard, but it was hit on the barrel. But Gomes, you know, stays out over this ball. Change up, kind of fading out over, but he stays back behind it. Sometimes you don't have to swing hard to earn yourself a hit. And he found the barrel just enough. To cause the deflection and get himself in safely in the first base with a single. So now Ron Washington's Angels dealing with a little bit of a jam. Cubs with men at first and second. A swing and a miss by Dom Smith. Washington named the Angels manager this offseason. Was the third base coach for the Atlanta Braves over the last seven years. On the outside corner for strike two. Manage Texas. In 2007 through 2014. A lot of success there with the Rangers. One and two. And with the Rangers won the American League pennant. In 2010 and 2011. It's been 10 years playing in the big leagues. Check swing, did he go? Yeah, he did. That's what Jim Wolfie says. I think it was close. It's a good pitch. A change up. You don't usually see lefty, lefty change ups, but that's not a bad spot to, to kind of pull the string on it, fade the ball down and into a lefty. It's a good pitch. You don't see it a whole lot, but it, it can be effective just like that one. So 
Two on, two out for the Cubs here in the last of the fourth. Miles Mastroboni at the plate. Mastroboni struck out swinging in the second. He's 0 for 1. Every time I see Ron Washington, I think about the infield drills that he would work on as players. Probably helped develop Dansby Swanson. But those every days, just the, the plays on the knees, working on your hands, working on your picks, working on your, your simple stuff that as a successful infielder, that's what you got to do. I mean, it's it's easy to do it. I have all of our youth baseball players that I coach do some every days because just working on that hand, working through the ball, uh, just on the knees, to keep it simple. But when I think about Ron Washington, not only being a baseball lifer, think about the impact that he's had on probably hundreds and hundreds of Major League Baseball players for their defense. Everyone around the game Love has him. a story about Ron Washington as a unique way of connecting with players. Always keeps it light. Very, very likable, no doubt. He wasn't sure if he'd get another opportunity as a skipper. That one's outside for ball four. Mastroboni draws a two out walk, and the bases are now loaded for Nico. Corner 0 for 2 this afternoon. at a strike from Rosenberg. Oh, and won the count. Reed Detmer started for the Angels, went three innings, giving up just one run on two hits. He struck out six, did not walk a batter. Warner puts a charge in one, but tracking it down is the second, is the center fielder, Moniak, in right center field. Cubs leave the bases loaded. This is Top five, and the Cubs are down 4-1 to the Angels. Edward Alzelay is on the mound this inning. You know, I had a chance to catch up with Dom Smith. Here's a player who's trying to earn his way on this roster. But I was curious, as someone new coming onto this team, what has he felt about the energy? What's it like? And he said that you can right away see the talent this team has. They have prospects. You can just see it throughout the whole system. And that's why the energy is the way it is. What exactly is that energy? He said there's just a confidence. Like, you just want to be a part of it all. He said they just 
know how to be serious, how to be for professional to win. And so that's kind of just how he described it, that that I'm going to use the word edge because that's the word that then Talkman I, earlier in the spring, I asked him about like the energy this spring. And he's like, you know, I don't know if I describe it. There's like an edge to this team. He goes, maybe because we came up short last year that now this is a team as and then Dansby's even described it. We kind of just know what to do. Like you're, you're focused on certain things. I mean, this is a team. They want to have the success from last year, but take it a step further and get into the playoffs, guys. Yeah, at least I think they believe there's some unfinished business after what transpired last September. Yeah, it just came up what, one game short. You know, that that can really be felt. You know, that it was a tough end of the season to be that close after playing 162 grueling games, dealing with a lot of adversity. Uh, so something to think about in the offseason, something to to kind of work for, to finish the lot like finish the season cross the line and at a good mark win it outright I think it's a very winnable division and they have a lot to be excited when Bellinger was signed last week it's like we're back we're back we were there last year we're going to do it again Smith makes the play at first the nice underhand toss to Adbert Alzali to complete the play this pitching change is brought to you by Lakeside Bank Lakeside Bank it's about time and maybe things would have been different if some in September if Alzali had been able to stay healthy for most of that month he was lights out last season 22 saves in 58 games a 2.67 ERA but that forearm strain in early September really hurt the bullpen soft bouncer to third Morell's throw in time two away yeah his absence was definitely felt late in September he, he went down with the forearm strain he was in a groove too but a good play you know, Morell's positioned nicely right here in at the grass cut uh, again just fundamental play stays back shows off what he has is a 99th percentile arm strength according to Savant baseball showcases the cannon goes a dart Dozier grounds one up the middle Nico fields it and that's out number three a one two three fifth for Alzali this copyright Back at Sloan Park, bottom five, the Angels with a four to one lead over the Cubs. Seiya Suzuki leading things off. And he looks at a strike from the left hander, Kenny Rosenberg. Seiya's 0 for 2 this afternoon. Robbed of a home run on a deep shot to left by Jake Marizzi. And his first at bat this time hits one in the air. Deep left center field. This could go. And this time, Seiya's got it. He leaves the yard for a home run. His first of the spring. It's now four to two.
This home run replay is brought to you by Toyota, official vehicle of the Chicago Cubs. Saya staying back, leaning on that fastball, and that's a good swing, especially this early in spring training, to pull the hands in on a fastball well executed. Stay inside of it, find the barrel. Notch it as a hard hit, but also notch it as a home run. Not to put too much pressure on the man at the plate, but now that Belly's back, can he make it back to back? Let's see. Deep drive down the right field line, and this one hooks foul. He was thinking it. You were thinking it. You're almost a <laughs> magician with that one. That, that's a good swing, too, but Suzuki was on time on that heater. That's that's exactly where he left off August and September, being able to catch up to decent velocity inside. But Bellinger, like we talked about early in the broadcast, his ability to hit lefties, find the barrel, battle. He's one, two count, but when Bellinger's behind in the count, 0-2, oh, 1-2, two, 2-2. Two, two, two. It hasn't seemed to matter. Great back-to-ball skills by Bellinger. Fouls that one away. One and two. Bellinger 0 oh, for 2 this afternoon. A ground out and a strikeout. Good taking and the key to posting up the, the numbers, especially versus lefties last year, was that front shoulder. When Belly was on time, his foot was down, he kept that front shoulder in and stayed on all the pitches. Even that pitch right there, if you pull that shoulder out, you hook it way foul or you swing and miss at it, but he keeps his his head down, that front shoulder stays in. When I would face, I faced a lot of lefties. I was a guy that come in sometimes the loogie, the lefty one out guy, <laughs> where I was coming exclusively for one batter, but I would always kind of sense where that front shoulder was to see if that outside part of the plate was open. But the best lefties that I would face stayed in there. They didn't flinch on breaking balls. I started at them sliders that were front hip. They stayed in on fastballs and Bellinger's shown that. I mean the difference between a couple years ago Bellinger versus lefties and last year was dramatic and he posted up the numbers he did because of that. Pretty good battle going on right here between the two lefties. Bellinger and Rosenberg. This had some tough matchups. The Detmers was was excellent with excellent stuff. Rosenberg's got some nice kind of similar left handed stuff. So to come out the gates facing two really tough left handed pitchers in your spring debut. You know after some limited work on field work he's played in some live VPs and, and sim game but. He looks pretty good. Looks like he's on time and catching up where he where he left off last year. Yeah, that's impressive. Bellinger waits for the 2 2. Here it comes. Full count. Bellinger saying when he ended up signing with the Cubs, I didn't hide the fact internally that I did want to come back here. Nice job. 11 pitch at bat. Gotta like to see that. Let's take a look at some of Cody Bellinger's damage last year. The ability to stay on the ball, drive the ball to all fields, capitalize on mistakes that hang middle. Just simple, just a simple load. He's in control of his body. You see that front side firm up, creating all that torque and all that power that he has, but he was on point all year. The NL comeback player of the year was back in that MVP form that we saw when he was a Dodger in 2019. It's good to have him back in Cubby Blue, no doubt about that. So Bellinger now at first after drawing the walk. And Christopher Morell at the plate. Morell one for two. Not only the offensive production we saw from Cody, but defense. I mean, the gold glove, first baseman that he can be, the center field, Action that he covers all the ground, great reads, great plays. He's just so exciting and just a, a vital piece of this Cubs team. A leader behind the scenes. I think the thing that impresses me about Bellinger is a lot of guys, if they have to move, switch positions over and over again, it impacts their ability at the plate. Not so with Bellinger. Morell takes a ball inside, one and two. It's a tough game. I mean, it, we've seen how tough it could be to play. Good defense, but playing great defense is e 
<laughs> That's tough, but he makes it look so easy. You think about that that catch in Houston he made against the wall, robbing that play where he ended up with the, the knee contusion or a little bit of a twisted strain knee that set him back. I think 30, 32 games he missed, but the that type of excitement is what Cody can bring to the ballpark every single day. Now the 2-2. Drilled fair ball down the left field line. This will roll all the way to the track. Bellinger on his way to third. As Morel cruises into second base with a double, his second hit of the ball game. You got to keep that bat in the lineup for plays like this. I mean, kind of in between, got himself behind in the count. He got a mistake, a little, little crippled change up that didn't get to the spot. And just a nice job for Chris Romero to stay back, capitalize on a mistake. We see the first to third. I mean, this I love, love watching guys run, especially going first to third, challenging the defense. But easy stand-up double for Chris Morell. We got some, we got a big inning shaping up here, Zach. And Dansby Swanson due up with men at second and third. Cubs down by two here with no one out. In the last of the fifth. Cubs have had plenty of opportunities today. They need a big hit in a spot like this. Bounced up the middle, and it's fielded by the second baseman, Paris. His throw to first in time. So one away, the runners have to stay right where they were at second and third. And a nice job by Rosenberg to kind of let this ball go through. He wanted to reach up and glove that because as a pitcher, you're just ready to field the ball. If it's coming at you, sometimes it's self-defense, sometimes it's not. But he knew where his infielders were. Second baseman was positioned right behind him. Let's the ball go. Sometimes you reach for it, it hits off your glove, it goes in that gap on the right side, and then the beginning continues. But smart move. Nice little baseball IQ move by Rosenberg to let that ball go through. Infield in for the Angels with Mike Talkman at the plate. Good speed on the bases for the Cubs with Bellinger at third, Morell at second, and just one down here in the fifth. Outside, 2 0. Oh. Talkman one for two with a single. It's a nice little pitch mix right there to kind of pull the string on a changeup. Rosenberg knows that first base is open, so like he can kind of be a little cautious, cautious of his pitch location right there. Kind of has a little bit of wiggle room. That had the sound. Deep drive to left field. Marisnik goes back and brings off the wall. Bellinger comes in, racing around third, and coming home is Morrell. Tie ball game. Good. Mike Talkman comes through 4 4 here in the fifth. He doesn't like nicknames with the Palatine. Pounda pounds a drive to deep left field off the wall. 2 1 count. Letting the ball travel. I talked a little bit ago about keeping the le that right shoulder in and taking the ball where it's pitched. Look at that head position is nice. It's a simple swing. He extends through the baseball, getting the carry that he needs. A big swing. We talked about traffic on the base paths all afternoon so far. Missing that timely hit. There's your timely hit, Zach. The pride of Palatine, Mike Talkman with a two run double to even it up at four. This pitching change is brought to you by Lakeside Bank. Lakeside Bank, it's about time.
Chicago Cubs baseball on Marquee Sports Network is brought to you by UI Health, changing medicine for good. By Toyota, official vehicle of the Chicago Cubs. And by Northwestern Medicine, when it comes to your health, a second opinion is always a good idea. Get yours at Northwestern Medicine. Cubs have already scored three times here in this fifth inning. Mike Talkman's two-run double, tying the game at four. The new man on the mound is right-hander Hans Kraus. And this pitch to Jan Gomes is low and outside for a ball as Talkman steals third. When you come in as a reliever, you're kind of thinking about, got to throw strikes, got to throw strikes. I'm going to work on the batter. Sometimes you forget about your guy on second. You don't give him that look or that second look. And a great heads-up play by Talkman to easily swipe third base. Let's send it downstairs to the dugout, Annalise. With Cody Bellinger. Cody, how does it feel to be back in the lineup and out there? Really good. Felt good. Uh, always exciting that first at bat. No matter what, you just get jitters. So, uh, felt good. And uh, it's excited. And yeah, it was a good one. How about just hearing from the fans again and how much they're how excited they are to have you back? Yeah, it feels great. You know, it's uh, it's, it's definitely an unbelievable feeling. And uh, for me, I was, uh, you know, excited to get out there and, you know, just try and try and play the game. Speaking of playing the game, what's it like for you right now in spring? A little late start, but you're getting your at-bats in today. Yeah, I feel good. Um, you know, I wanted to, my goal is to come in uh, pretty much ready and, um, you know, so I was doing what I could physically and mentally to uh, stay as prepared as possible. And I, uh, you know, had a good few days of hitting lives before and, um, you know, my first live game today. And so I'm, I'm feeling good. You know, in a few days, we'll see you in the field too. I I'm so curious, somebody who plays center and first, how do you stay fresh at both very different positions? Yeah, you know, a lot of it is footwork. Um, obviously the, the game at first base is a lot quicker. Um, center field uh, was a little more physically taxing. And, uh, you know, for me, just staying on top of my footwork, center field, first base, it's uh, really different. Um, and so, not really different, but there, there's some difference in, in, you know, just staying on top of uh, the visuals and the footwork. I got to know. So, Dansby told us the story. You FaceTime him after you sign and he hangs up on you because he needed to go to bed. But then you call him back. What's your reaction when you're trying to get a hold of him and he doesn't pick up? Yeah, well, so I called him. I saw him that night and we were just, or that day, and we were just catching up. And I knew we were close. And... Uh, so that night when it was official, I gave him a call and he just rang, I, you know, and he didn't hang up on me or nothing. It just rang. And so I thought he was asleep. And so I called him next morning. I gave him the news, found out like three days later that he actually saw it. And I was like, oh, OK, OK. Um, but yeah, that's the story. <laughs> What's it like to be back with these guys? It feels great. I mean, the, the vibe in this clubhouse is great. And I think we have a really good team and uh, I'm excited to be back and try and contribute the best I can and just uh, help any way I can. I know you said in, in your introductory press conference you want to play in the playoffs in Chicago. Why was that important to you to come back and be on that mission? Yeah I think we were so close last year and I knew that I knew that this squad can do it and um, you know like I said to experience a playoff game in Chicago would be pretty special. Um, the fans are um, you know they're, they're, they're extremely great fans and, and very passionate fans so it would be, be awesome. It will be awesome. We'll see what can happen. Cody thank you so much. Appreciate it. Cubs break out the big bats in the fifth, and they lead five to four.
The Cubs are up five to four as I'm joined now by Nico Horner. Nico, I just got done talking to Cody Bellinger. I'm curious just to see him in there back. What's it like? Yeah, he got a lot of swings off. I feel like nice to get that in your first first day back at the third of bat. He had like five or six swings, so a couple hard hit balls, and he looks great. What's it like to kind of then get that view of, you know, you get to see Bellinger in there and more of the full picture? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the more you can get the group together and um, getting a sense of what that's going to look like during the regular season, uh, the better. And, um, you know, there's obviously a lot of overlap from last year, but some new pieces too. So, yeah. Going into this spring, what's it like for you? You get a gold glove last year. Like the mindset and wanting to continue that on defense. Yeah, I think last year I, I improved as the year went on, which was which was nice because you know I felt comfortable at second, but also felt like I had some from, some room for improvement. Playing a full year there for the first time, so I'm um, just looking to build on that. There's so much work that you put in that we don't see. If you had to tell like young kids out there, what's key to being versatile? Someone who can play short and second, but excelling at a new position like the way you did. Yeah, I mean it's a. Uh, Everyone obviously is going to want to play short and center and catch, stay in the middle of the field, and you know, I think that's great. But you know, the more that you're available, um, the more you can help a team, and especially you know if you're a freshman or um, playing at a new level like the major leagues for me, uh, just gives you every that much more opportunity, especially if you can hit. Was there something that you even learned about yourself as you were going through it, and as you said, like got better throughout the season? Um, yeah, I mean, I think just for me playing shortstop definitely is something I'm, I don't want to lose even as a second baseman I think it brings out like a lot of my best athleticism and just being aggressive and arm strength and all that so just important to remember that, uh, that when I'm playing like a shortstop at second base I'm at my best <laughs> that's cool I love that what has you excited about this team from what you guys did last year and then what you get to see at camp yeah I think it's a nice combination of um, a core group of guys that we're bringing back that feels like um, you know, we did some things well last year, but I think a lot of us feel we, we left a lot on the table just individually and as a group. And so I think a healthy amount of that combined with nice play, uh, combined with um, this camp, especially just the young guys have, have obviously played so well and um, not, not just results, but just how they carried themselves. And uh, it's a nice reflection of everything that's going on in our system right now. And um, just a really exciting to see that. And obviously. I don't know how that all plays out this this season with those guys, but just knowing that there's guys knocking on the door that are ready to contribute is a huge deal. You were once that guy, right? Like waiting for that call that you, that you get. What have you talked to the younger guys about? What have you observed? Just how they carry themselves here? Yeah, I mean, obviously everyone wants to produce and um, open eyes on the field, but just the value of getting to know people in spring training. I know for me, even though I wasn't in big league camp in 2019, just getting to know the, the staff and um, trainers and everything and just having some sense of comfort from being called up um, and playing and backing up some games that year really helped me when I was called up in September and um, just to you know soak in those relationships so that when you are called up like as as much of it as smooth as, as can be and then you can just do your thing on the field never know when the call can come and good play by play too thank you for that I appreciate it Nico thank you yeah of course have a good one if Nico says that it's a good defensive play it's a good defensive play yeah he's right on cue he goes nice play <laughs> and it was a nice play. So no, he, uh, if Morell's at the hot corner over there, knows his runner and doesn't try to get attack that that kind of in between hop. He actually took a step back and played that ball right, knowing who was in the batter's box and made a nice throw. So another another nice play by Morell, but nice job by Nico too with the color commentary. <laughs> Look out! Strike three call. Carl Edwards Jr. has retired the first two batters he's faced here in the top half of the sixth. Love that. And I love Carl Edwards Jr. I mean, it, such good memories come back when I see him pitch. But the stuff is the same as we saw when he was competing in, with that 2016 Cubs team. Backdoor curveball, balls off the plate, left handed batter, visual is that's a ball, that's a ball, that's a ball. And then falls in on that outside. That's a perfect pitch. But the good memories I talk about him getting those two outs in that 10th inning in route to the Cubs. World Championship was such an awesome moment. He, he, and he still got what appears to be the same stuff we saw him compete, you know, seven years ago. Unbelievable. Edwards deals, and that one's low for a ball to show Adele. He has spent five years with the Cubs, including that magical 2016 season. Edwards now 32 years old. He's bounced around San Diego, Seattle, Atlanta. Toronto last year with Washington and now hoping to make the Cubs in 2024. Although he bounced around all those teams, I think he looks best in this year. 
never realized how much of a fashionista you were. <laughs> and this one's a fair ball down the left field line. It'll roll all the way to the corner. Huffing and puffing on his way to second base is Joe Adele with a two-out double. Joe Adele's second extra base hit. He homered his last at bat. Stays on a curveball. And again, good hitters with good swings stay in the in the zone with the barrel. He was fooled. He was out front, but he just continued his extension, keeping the barrel in the strike zone as long as he could. Keeps the ball fair, clips the ball out front, even though he was fooled. It's a good swing to keep it fair and, and score himself a double. Jake Marisnik swings and misses. Nick is two for two with a home run and bunt single. Come in. Low and outside. If you're scoring at home, we've got a whole bunch of changes to get you caught up to date on. Brand new outfield. Red hot Owen Casey in left. Pete Pro Armstrong in center field. Kevin Alcantara out in right. Dell takes third. So my apology, my apologies on Morrell, thinking that was a Morrell play on Sano, but it's a good play by Murray. Yeah, PJ Murray. And a nice play by Adele right here to, to kind of sniff an extra base, you know, puts himself in scoring position on a wild pitch, okay. something like that. One base closer, but a heads up base run. We've seen a lot of the, the Angels base runners really be aggressive on the base pass in this game. And if they're gonna win games and more games they have over the past few seasons they need to use the legs move the ball like they've done today fly ball hit down the right field line slicing foul out of play but the stuff is good from cj i mean he's still got great life on his fastball you know mid 90s 93 94 miles per hour still got great depth on his breaking ball we've seen him throw a change up so far another change up here Murray fields this on a high hop. The throw high and coming in to score is Adele. The Angels tie the game at five. And that hot corner's been hot today. There's a lot of balls heading to the left side of the infield. Nice job to range those left to get on it, but I, I still think at times when an infielder starts to think about the throw. You get in your own way just a little bit. So if he's aggressive and doesn't hesitate a little bit, stays a little bit lower, stays a little bit at more athletic and shuffles more towards first base, I think it's a strike on the mark. The moment you start thinking or having that little bit of doubt, that's when you see a throw like Murray's throw, like Morrell's throw. These guys have fielded ground balls and thrown the ball across the diamond thousands of times. But the moment the doubt creeps in is when you get results like that. So just going through the play, like you've gone a million times trying to get in your own way. And then again, another good throw, I think, would happen. You know, for many years, I, I covered the Chicago Bears. And there's an old saying in football you think you're beat. Yeah. I, I think it applies to this game, certainly, but especially on the pitching run. Chad Wallach looks at a ball. And they get the out at second base as Marisnik is gunned down trying to steal second. Nice play for Hale Farley.
Sunday, April 21st, the Cubs will offer the first installment of a special Heritage Cap series. Fans who purchase through the special ticket offers page will receive a limited edition Cubs cap featuring the flag of Mexico. Visit Cubs.com slash specials. Getting set for the last of the sixth here in Mesa. 5-5 game, Cubs and Angels, and red hot Owen Casey at the plate. He looks at a strike. Look at these numbers. Just put his head down, learning, and posting up number. He's looked very comfortable in the box. He showcased the power to all fields so far. And we've talked about the hitting credentials. I mean, they're they're there. I mean, a great eye, patient approach, staying within his zone, attacking pitches that he can handle is what we've seen so far in spring training from Owen. He's having a nice job and the red hair. Zach. It's really beautiful. spectacular. Oh, yeah. It is, uh, it is something else. You know, the red-headed male is the rarest of the human species. <laughs> so when you have one operating at an elite level as Casey <laughs> is this spring. And you are as well. Always. Yeah. Elite level. There's a reason they're not showing you on TV at the moment. Here comes the 2-2 delivery. Boy. Call strike three. Let's take a look at Owen Casey's spring so far. Yeah. He's been good. There's lefty, lefty serving the ball to left field. Look at the balance. It's good. Just a great bat path. Quick hands. Showcases some power, especially on this oppo home run to the left field. But yeah, he, he's put up some great numbers so far in his young career. He's only 21 years old. And he's continuing to do it here in spring training. He's really opening up some eyes. Yeah, just 21 years old. Acquired in the deal that sent you Darvish to San Diego as David Bowie swings and misses 0 and 2. We talked about Owen Casey having a nice spring. Very nice to see David Bodie back healthy in the lineup. He's posting up a nice spring so far. Rosenberg kind of finding his groove a little bit. Back to back strikeouts. That's a nice change up kind of down in the zone, but Bo Bodie's been good as well. Back downstairs, Elise, what do you got? Well, you guys, you highlighted Owen Casey spring so far, and that's what Council did earlier. He said it's hard to imagine a player playing better than the way Casey has played, just how he's played wonderfully this spring. And he said it is impressive. Like last night, he was basically sitting on the bench for a few hours and then comes up and gets a pinch hit double. And he said that's impressive. But he also said with younger guys like a Casey or a Shaw, so they were having good springs, and you get excited about them because you want to see them at some point. He's saying there's also meaningful development that still, you know, is out there to be had. And so there's that element of patience that comes with it, too, right? And it's been extremely impressive to watch him kind of find himself this spring. Popped up along the right field line underneath it and making the catch for out number three.
Javier Assad is on the mound to start the top of the seventh, and I talked to him about this earlier. It is something very, very cool that you can now see in Tijuana, and that is a mural of Assad himself. It's something that he got to see. I mean, take a look at this. It's absolutely fantastic. I talked to Assad about it before the game. He said he was super, super happy about it, that the mayor's office contacted him and said they wanted to put this up for him. And so he said that it was, it was probably in part not just overall the success he's having in the big leagues, but he thought in particular for what he did in the WBC. And we remember that last year. I mean, he really shined in that setting. And so he said his whole family, they got to go and see it. And he took that picture. And you could just tell, you know, it was something he was really proud of. I thought they did a great job with it. That picture is so cool. And again, just something he said it was really special and he's super, super happy about. Yeah, that is extremely cool. Elise, thank you very much. And I think it's because of that big game experience that Assad has had from early on in his life in Mexico for Team Mexico in the World Baseball Classic that has allowed him to immediately become a contributor with the Cubs. I agree. I think thought his WBC appearances really proved to himself that he can compete on a big stage face the best of the best and he was great in the WBC he carried it right into last season he was he was in the mix for that fifth starter uh, coming out of spring training he didn't make it but he, it didn't matter like he, he went down to the minor leagues he pitched in the, the relief role got his starts he ended up eating over 100 innings for David Ross last year and I expect him to do it again for Craig Council this year he's very dependable the pitch ability the mix the, the sinker movement, the cutter, just for him to be able to manipu manipulate the ball in many different ways makes him really effective. And the confidence that he grew last year, he's going to carry it over to 2024. And Elise, you could say that 2024 is a new version of Javier Assad. Yeah. So you might notice that he looks a little bit leaner than last year. And I, I asked him about that. He said he didn't necessarily lose weight, but it really is like because he's like the same weight, he said right now as last season. It's just that he got a little bit leaner. And he said what prompted it is he tends to gain weight throughout the season. So he really is kind of like you said, Zach, he wanted to just feel like this is a fresh start feeling good going into the season because he knows himself and just how he is throughout the season. And, you know, Sean, I don't know if it's something that you did like it, it just feels like when a pitcher does this he's getting to know himself really well and it's part of kind of like establishing that routine right yeah no doubt and now he knows how to prepare himself in the off season and how to be ready for he was ready for every role he pitched in middle relief he pitched a little bit of high leverage he got his start he got his innings he was effective in all those roles so you know as a big leaguer and I, I was kind of a guy that pitched in multiple roles I came up as a starter I end up being a swing guy. I'd start, I'd relieve. And then I found my niche in the back of the bullpen, seventh, eighth, some closing experience. But every time I was handed the ball by my manager, I went out there and I pitched like it was my last game. And I think Javier Assad feels that way. He leaves it all in the field every time he's on the mound. Every pitch that he makes, he takes his time in between pitches, working on his execution and the results have shown so far. Round ball hit to third, backhanded by Murray, the throw across in time. And Assad just making pitches, I always say it, like a like a broken record, but he just continues to pound quality strikes off the barrel. Just good movement, just enough late movement, just enough off pitches, able to, to he has enough on his fastball, 93, 94 miles an hour when he wants it. But he really does a nice job of staying within himself and his delivery, able to make great pitches on the regular for sure like that downhill I mean Greg Maddox always said the best pitch was fastball down the way and that's a great pitch if Greg Maddox said it it's true Levon Soto <laughs> at the plate here comes the 0 1 that's low. the tunnel good pitch you know pounds that fastball down throws a change up in the exact same spot tunneling those two pitches that didn't get him to bite that's that's good mix. Little right backdoor door. cutter. Do you remember how long it took you to feel the kind of confidence Assad feels? And he's had it, I think, since day one as a big leaguer. Where yeah. You trust your stuff no matter who's at the plate. Trust. And like I've, I've said before, with the ground balls, the third base, you start to doubt yourself, and that's when you make bad pitches. If you pitch confident with conviction, you're going to get results just like Javier Assad. A one, two, three inning.
Cody Bellinger making his spring debut today. He hit third, was the designated hitter. Rounded out in his first at bat. He's going to show up in a golf cart. Just make your presence known. But Belly was good. His last at bat was an 11 pitch at bat off of Rosenberg, who was pretty tough today. Lefty, lefty. Fouled off six pitches, got his swings in, able to track a lot of pitches today. A good first day for Cody Bellinger. Yeah, finished 0 for 2 with that walk and a run scored. 5 5 ball game as we begin the last half of the seventh inning. Man on the mound for the Angels, Jimmy Herget. The six foot three right hander is pitching. That's a that's a tough arm slot right there. Tall guy, six three. Weighing in at 170, maybe, maybe a little bit more, but that kind of that that slingshot, you know, sinker slider from there, but it's a backdoor slider right here from a pretty Tough arm angle, kind of slinging it up there. Uh, the stirrup socks, though, really stand out to me. I mean, that is a lost art form. You know, was he? The, does he have the legs to <laughs> to rock them? I think so. But the stirrup socks, you don't see them very much. But it's always a very nice, traditional, solid look. Bryce Windham draws a walk to begin the last of the seventh inning. You know, to me, what's impressive is the fact that he draws attention to the stirrups with the hesitation on the leg kick. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Defensive changes for the Angels. Guzman now at second base. Humphreys behind the plate. This is the time in the game where it gets pretty tough to score, Zach. It's like hockey, like a hockey line change where they just come in and out. You never really know who's out there. But it's good we get to see guys like PCA come in. He played last night's game, probably didn't get back from surprise until 11.30. He was back here to get some more work and to get some at-bats late in this game. Yeah, his first at-bat of the afternoon, one and one the count. Crow Armstrong waits. Here's the pitch. Swing and miss. Ooh. It's like a frisbee, you know, like a like a boomerang. Kind of ball just kind of sits there, kind of hangs there, and last minute makes a left turn. But he's got some good spin on those breaking balls. It, it's a, it's a tough arm angle, kind of that low three quarter, little herky jerky. Swing and a miss, strike three, one away. You know, with Cody Bellinger now on the team. And we know that Mike Talkman is going to start the year with the Cubs. How do you think it's going to play out, at least initially, for Pete Crow Armstrong? Yeah, and I, I think at this point in his career, he had a limited sample size as far as at bats at the big league level last year. As much as I would love to see him roving around the outfield and, and being a player at the big league level, I think he does need a little bit more seasoning. I think getting more at bats. Really carrying good confidence down at AAA, uh, getting regular work, regular defense, facing multiple types of pitchers like, like we see with Jimmy Harrigan that at low three quarter, the lefties, uh, the high velocity right handers, left handers, whatever. Getting a, a lot of mix, facing a lot of different pitchers is going to be good for PCA. But I don't think he would get those reps at the big leagues this year, this early in the season. But it's going to take an entire squad. Of players to contribute. And his time will come, it just might not be quite yet. Another one of those young players at the plate right now in Kevin Alcantara, AKA the Jaguar. Great nickname. His glove last night, he was showcasing his glove. The runner goes, throw to second, not in time, a stolen base for Wendy. And we talk about the Cubs top prospects. Kevin is is no doubt one of them. Good jump here. Timed him up. I mean, this is he's in there nice and easy, but great job 
Uh, and that's probably a little bit on the pitcher, but really timed him up. Got a nice jump. So the go ahead run on second base. The 2 1 Alcantara fouls it back. Yeah, he's just 21 years old. Three different minor league levels last season hit 284 with 13 home runs, 71 RBIs, and 810 OPS. That's pretty good. Yeah. Hey, ah, that's called strike three. That's that's borderline. That's borderline. It's frustrating. But the ball starts in. I think stays in. I don't think it ever really got back to that inside corner. That's a tough pitch. You know, as a pitcher, of course, yeah. I'll be fired up to get that <laughs> call. But as a hitter, you see Kevin Alcantara's frustration. It's, you know, it's an unhittable pitch. It doesn't start as a strike, doesn't end as a strike, and that's a tough way to end that at bat. Chase Strumpf at the plate with Wyndham at second for the Cubs. 5 5 game, two down here in the last of the seventh. Last pitch to Alcantara is the kind of pitch and call that has players talking to themselves in the dugout. Strump, 25 years old, grew up in Southern California, played his college ball at UCLA. One and one. Second round pick in 2019. Fouled away. That's good swing. Good timing. Yeah, as we see late in these games, we see the crop of talent. The Cubs farm system is loaded, and that is a, a great position to be in. Going forward, whether, like I said before, it's going to take an entire army to win championships. And we've seen over the past few days some of the elite talent, and the Cubs are deep in it. We head to the eighth, tied at five. As Justin Steele got the start in Mesa today. Welcome to the Budweiser broadcast booth. This Bud's for you, the Clydesdales at Sloan Park. And Steele was backed by some big offense in today's ball game, Sean. They, they had the big bats going early. Yeah, it was good to see what possibly could be most of the Cubs opening day roster on display. But we saw in the fifth inning, Three extra base hits. We saw the home run by Suzuki, an excellent at bat by Bellinger, 11 pitches. He got some swings off, fouled off six. But yeah, that, that was the big scoring inning. There's th the three extra be base hits. Morell also had one of them. Talkman with the double. But yeah, just going back to Steele, it was a bit of a grind for him today. 
the Angels did a nice job getting his pitch count up in that third inning. But again, as far as learning experiences go, you got to deal with adversity. You got to learn from him. So I thought he did a nice job to pitch out of that jam in the third inning. Got his pitch count up where they want him at this point in spring training. But a little bit to learn from, and he'll carry it into his next start. And just moments ago, Justin Steele met with the media to give his perspective on today's start. Some adversity in spring training. That inning felt like a little adversity there. Do you, you feel like you, you did a good job getting through it eventually? Yeah, for sure. It's uh, it's always good to get those under your belt during spring training. You know, this is the time to work on stuff, and um, it's always good to have a few of those before the season starts. So when you're, when you run into it during the season, you kind of already been through it. What are some of the things you um, The changeups and the sinkers were two things I was really focusing on today. I got some good. Sinkers, I threw a good one to Moniak, got a swing and miss on it. There's some good change-ups. The one that Marisnik hit out was actually a change-up. Um, so probably won't throw them change-ups anymore. But uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's good to, it's good in spring training to like work on that stuff, see like how it looks versus hitters and stuff. So it was good. Do you find your after you have more experience in the league that you're treating spring different, like you know better how to handle these stuff versus feeling like you gotta get a really out? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say I'm definitely approaching it a little different. Um, just throwing the sink, like I said, the sinkers, the change ups, the curveballs, just the pitches that I didn't throw a lot of last year. I really want to get them to a spot where I'm just as confident in them as my other pitches. So, yeah, I would say I'm attacking spring a little bit different with um, just like with the experience and stuff under my belt. But uh, yeah, it's good to work on stuff. Yeah, like when, when do you want to switch into like straight competition? Um, probably the first day of the season, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but as long as spring training is going on, I feel like it's just a good time to work on stuff. Probably the last start of spring for me, I'll probably I'll probably go deeper into the game, so there'll probably be situations where I'll lean on my strengths a little bit more. But um, yeah, for the most part, I'm just kind of looking at spring as I let's figure out you know where the sinker, the uh, the changeup, and the curveball are versus hitters, you know, and just kind of get a good feel for where they're at going into season and know exactly how to use them and when to use them. Yeah, I mean, we've uh, we've had a bunch of good conversations thus far, but uh, something we always talk about is just like, you know, the battles we had last year when I'd be pitching and um, they'd be on the other side and stuff, and he'd kind of just give me his experience of it and stuff, and I'd give him mine. But it was always good battles when I was pitching against the Brewers. Those were always fun games. But um, it's good to have him on our side. You know, there's a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience there, and yeah, it's just been all good conversations. Early in spring, you talked about showed his bullpen. You mm -hmm. got to see the first out and just what, yep. what have you thought of? I would say as advertised, and he's only going to get better. Um, that's the thing. As he gets innings and more pitches under his belt at this level, he's going to figure out what works and what doesn't work and when to use things, and I think he's going to be really good. And just in time for out number three, some words of wisdom there from Justin Steele. We head to the last of the eight. What?
it is 5-5. Want to get you updated on some injuries. Last night we saw Caleb Killian leave the game. He and we heard this from counsel before the game. Killian did get an MRI this morning and it is somewhat concerning that after leaving the game they did feel the need to get an MRI. It was just something that the coaches noticed last night during the game that it, just the mannerisms of Killian were off and uh, it happened a couple pitches before he gave up a hit and so uh, they said that you know they were going to be cautious and now getting that MRI. Uh, Madrigal, he is also getting an MRI on his right hamstring. Uh, they're being cautious with him given his injury pass. So what do we got here? B.J. Murray, he breaks the tie. So you got 6-5 Cubs. So Madrigal, he's going to get an MRI on his right hamstring just to make sure that everything is okay there. Uh, wisdom he is progressing well with his right quad issue so we could see him in a game Friday or Saturday and Ian Happ he did some on field hitting today so they're very optimistic that Happ will be ready for opening day given that he started activities and he can get in some at bats before the start of the season to steal a term from Elise that was a BJ Bomsky putting the Cubs ahead six nice. to five here in the eighth BJ is it it's not taco Tuesday but it is for BJ going opposite field. Good swing, staying inside the ball. Finding the barrel. It's a nice swing by number 16. BJ Murray Jr. It's, it's got to feel good. Wednesday for him. It's got to feel good. So the batter now, Jonathan Long, and he gets hit. He's fine. Long will head to first base. Doesn't feel good. Never got hit at the major league level, but I know that that stings a little bit. It's going to leave a mark. But again, I got traffic on the base pass. You know, nobody out. Man on first. Already run in. And hot hitting Owen Casey at the plate for the Cubs. Let's see if he can make the Angels pay here. Looks at a strike on the outside corner. Shakes his head just a little bit. And I think it it almost gets back to that corner, but I, I don't think it's a strike, and I don't think that Owen thinks it was either. The 0-1. In there for strike two. Casey grew up in Burlington, Ontario. It's halfway between Toronto and Niagara Falls. Second round pick of the Padres in 2020. One and two. Last year in double A for the Cubs. 289 batting average, 22 home runs, 84 RBIs in 120 games with a 917 OPS. That'll play. Yeah, that'll that'll definitely play. You, you want a guy like that on your team, not facing a guy like that. But Owens, he posted up some gaudy numbers uh, without a doubt. I like the approach. He was a big, strong guy, and I think he just continues to develop into that frame. And you're going to see numbers like that from here on out. He used a term the other day that I love. He's always looking for pitches in his go zone. Bouncing ball hit to second. There's one. Throw to first, not in time. So one down. Casey at first base after the fielder's choice. This year, Cubs Destinations, presented by National Car Rental, features trips to San Francisco and Washington, D.C. Packages include tickets, hotel, a meet and greet with a current Cub, and so much more. For details, visit Cubs.com slash destinations. David Bodie pops one in the shallow right center field, drifting back the second baseman, Guzman, who makes the catch. Two down. So here's Jorge Alfaro. Oh, 
for one on the afternoon. Looks at a strike. Threw out a runner. Jake Marisnik trying to steal a base. From his knees. Yep. That back in bullet. the sixth inning. Strike two call. Those are good spots to pitch to David Bodie too, right down on that outside corner. You know, Bodie may be a little bit too aggressive in that circumstance, but you don't want to get to two strikes and face that big sweeping slider he's shown so far. But uh, good execution, that sinker down and away. There's really not much you could do with that pitch. That's a great swing. one into right field for a base hit. Sounded good. Yeah, the love the sound of a wooden bat when it hits the sweet spot. You know, stays on this pitch, expects the ball out over the plate. I don't think Jimmy Hergit did any pitches that would have opened up that outside corner any more than they did. He didn't showcase anything in, running in, especially early. But if he shows in and goes back soft away, I don't think he gets that that result, the single hard hit, but that's a great job by Jorge Alfaro to stay on that. A pretty decent slider down on the edge down there. Marshall, I'm still taken aback here. I could have sworn you were a, a longtime pitcher in the big leagues talking about how you love hearing the sweet sound oh. of a ball hitting a wooden bat. My teammates is. Ah, OK. Yeah, I, I like that. But there's really nothing better than the crack of a wood bat. I mean, nothing against aluminum bats or composites or whatever, but it's just different. Baseball like it ought to be, right? Yeah. Bryce Windham at the plate with a 2 0 count. Men at first and second with two down here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Herget deals. That's a strike. Remember back in 2020 when there was no fans in the stands? Mm -hmm. And the sound, when you probably doing the the games on the radio the sound of that crack in the even an empty stadium what a sweet sound it is. Outside ball three. Yeah that was pure. You could really tell in yeah. those games when someone got a hold of one. It's also odd home runs at Wrigley Field. You could hear them clang off the, <laughs> the bleachers. Now the three one. Popped up. Just pulled off just a little bit. Foul territory off to the left. Dozier, the third baseman, makes the catch. And that ends the inning. But not before B.J. Murray puts a big pop in one and gives the Cubs a 6-5 to five lead. We head to the ninth.
Clyde Hoffel's upcoming schedule. Cubs close out the week tomorrow night in Goodyear against the Reds and then back in Mesa on Friday afternoon to take on the Seattle Mariners. Ninth inning at Sloan Park and Yancy Almonte now on the mound for the Cubs. Marshy's one of the guys the Cubs got in that trade with the Dodgers this offseason. Yeah, and he'll be a key piece of that bullpen for Craig Council. He's got some experience down there. Likely be setup guy, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth inning for Neris or Alzali, but he's got good stuff. I mean, he's you know, 95, 96, has a nice little put away slider, generates a bunch of swing and miss on it, but big frame guy you know it's going to take an entire army not only for the positions for Craig Council but out of that bullpen to have a successful season he will be a key part of all of it 29 years old 65 223 pounds native of Miami outside one and two the count and two years ago very very effective 35 in the third with the ERA just just over one but ran into a little trouble last year in 2023 with some walks you know you start putting guys on base they start marching around the bases and they score the guy behind you comes in but if he's going to be extremely effective like this pitch is we'll change up we'll split finger or something with some fade that's swing and miss the walk rate as we see ticked up just a little bit 12 percent which isn't too bad I like to see it stay around that seven but he's got good stuff fastball good execution down the zone gets your first pitch out five pitches into his outing so far he's already got two outs nice grab by Chase Strumpf to complete the play talk about an efficient ninth two down for Al Monte 49 games last year was three and two with a five plus CRA 49 strikeouts in 48 innings but it's 2022 that gets people excited in 33 games had a 1.02 ERA a couple of years ago I'd like to be able to get back to that yeah big guy is six foot five so get some angle get some tilt on the ball good leg drive some sweep on that pitch. It's like a, a sweeping slider. Not a sweeper. Not really sure how to throw a sweeper. <laughs> but he's got he's got good stuff. Here's your sinker down and in. It's now three and zero. The count to Zach Humphreys, the backup catcher for the Angels. Ball four, close pitch. Good spot, good movement. But maybe just a little bit too much run. Alfaro, nice job of sticking the pitch, kind of leaning towards that inside corner to make the ball appear out in front of his chest. But just a bit inside, ball four. Well, Monte's nickname is Showtime, and he's hoping to end the show right now. Back. That's a sound I also like, Zach. Yeah, that's what I no. figured you would say. Oh, no, the broken pitch. bat. Yeah. That's, that's that's a good sound when you're pitching. Let's let's listen to this again. This is firewood. Oh, look at you making the production team work overtime just to give you a sense yeah. of enjoyment on the broadcast. Like that. Your days into the bat. You know, the one that breaks in half, those maple bats that shatter in half and make you feel pretty good. Cutters in, jam them like that. The pitch to Guzman inside. And if I was pitching, I would have done the exact same thing. I would have thrown the exact same pitch, see if I could break a couple more, you know. But yeah, he's got great action on that, that sinker. Pitch in the dirt. Squirts away from Alfaro.
Now the 2 1. Bouncing ball. Murray uh -huh. makes the play to second, and now they got a rundown. Some high throws here. But finally, out number three. Cubs win. Six to five over the Angels. You know what that means. It's time to play the song. Baseball season's underway. Well, you better get ready for a brand new day. Hey, Chicago, what do you say? The Cubs are gone. Cubs win six to five over the Angels. B.J. Murray Jr. The go-ahead home run in the eighth inning. But we saw a lot of new guys make contributions. Cody Bellinger played his first game. Yancy Almonte picks up the save, and Justin Steele made his second start. Yeah, I mean, kind of some ugly moments in the game. The Cubs did make four errors, which we'd like to see them clean up just a little bit, but. You know, sometimes they're not pretty, but for Justin Steele to deal with some adversity this early in spring, at the same time building up his pitch count, I thought was very important. But we saw Yancy Almonte, the stuff was good, the life on all of his pitches. We saw the big fifth inning, Cubs three extra base hits, four runs to come back and tie the game. We saw an unlikely hero, B.J. Murray Jr., serving the opposite field, which turns home run, which turns into the game winning home run. It wasn't pretty. But it's always nice to hear that go Cubs go song because it ends up in a good result. So the Cubs improved to 6-6 and 1 this spring for Sean Marshall, Elise Menneker, and our entire crew. I'm Zach Zaidman. Thanks for watching Chicago Cubs Spring Training Baseball here on Marquee Sports Network. Cubs 6, Angels 5, your final score from Mason. Join us tomorrow at 7 o'clock Central when the Cubs take on the Reds. Hayden Wisniewski and Hunter Green are your scheduled starters. We'll see you then. Have a good rest of your Wednesday, everyone. Thanks for watching.